Hi, we're having a conversation with Jerry Coyne, and he is the author of Why Evolution is True. Uh, Professor Coyne, I found in your book the following quote. Uh, I found your evidence for evolution very convincing, but I still don't believe it. How do you deal with this? Um, a quote like that, it's hard to. What it means is that the person has listened and absorbed your presentation of evolution, presumably has grasped what you're trying to say, but they still don't believe it. And when you meet somebody like that, there's usually only one, well, there's usually two explanations. I've only encountered one. One is that they're completely impenetrable, that the things can't get through their head. That's not the, usually the case. In fact, it's never the case. The real reason is that they're resistant to evolution. And that's almost always for a single reason, that they're so religious that they cannot bring themselves to accept evolution. And what is it that evolution is true? Well, it's true in the sense that why that this desk is true or that bottle of water is true, that there's so much evidence in the favor of evolution and no evidence against it that um, you'd be foolish to deny its existence. In fact, you'd be willfully foolish. So it's true in the sense that we think that anything is true, that there's so much evidence in its favor that we can see and no evidence against it that you would be sort of perverse if you didn't accept it. And what is evidence? What exactly is evidence? Well, evidence is the evolution is a scientific theory. So there are observations you can make that support it, observations that you can make that don't support it. And there are observations from all over the area of biology, not only from the fossil record, but from the study of development, from the study of how organisms behave and how they look, from the distribution of organisms on the planet, which is called biogeography. There are many fields of biology, and they all produce evidence that evolution has happened. And there's a complete absence of evidence that evolution didn't happen. I mean, it is possible that the Bible would be true, and life would be 10,000 years old, and every species would be the same as it was originally, but that's not the way it is. So there's so much evidence in support of evolution, zero evidence against it, that that's strong enough to say that evolution is true. It's a fact. I have heard that many people resist evolution because it, um, it doesn't make us special. True. I mean, there's basically two reasons. That's one of them, why people don't evolution, like evolution. Humans like to think of themselves as special. Not only individuals, everybody thinks they're special, but as a species, we like to think we're the best species. That's uh, supported by religion, which tells us that we're a special species that was created um, by God in his image. That's what the Bible says. So evolution tells us sort of that that's not true, and then people don't like that. The other reason people don't like evolution is because they think that it, because it makes us into beasts, like chimpanzees or squirrels, that, that therefore we should behave like beasts. In other words, it takes away our basis for morality, and people don't like that either. So, I mean, both of those reasons are, I find, misguided, but those are the two main reasons people resist evolution. And that takes me to the final question. Why is it that we do not behave like beasts? Because we're rational. <laughs> um, well, you know, beasts aren't so bad after all. I mean, if you look at the way that elephants behave or dolphins behave, they are somewhat altruistic. They take care of their own. They're not, they don't kill each other. I mean, humans behave like beasts, <laughs> sometimes worse than beasts. We engage in cannibalism and genocide and needless acts of cruelty that other animals don't. So, um, you know. Um, Isn't that contradictory to, well, if we are, we have a reason, why is it that we behave against the life, for example? Yeah, well, I mean, animals do have their own form of morality, I think. As I mentioned a few minutes ago in a discussion, animals, elephants, when they're in trouble, their other elephants will help them. So, you know, that's not behaving like a beast. Well, it is. I mean, we're our, we are beasts and we behave like beasts. Um, but we also have rationality, and we have the ability to figure out, which animals can't, through our brains, how we can change our society in a way to make it harmonious, in a way to make it a better place for people to live. Animals can't do that, and we can. So, um, so we have a real reason not to behave completely according to our, our bestial dictates, and that's because we can build a better society if we don't. And I think that's part of the reason why humans are moral and other animals aren't. Well. Thank you, Professor Coyne, for sure. sharing this idea with us. And thank you very much.